Okay, Pavan is back. Uh, I think that's Vanessa. Hello. Hi, Vanessa. Okay, now you can hear me, right? Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry about that. I don't know what happened earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay. I think welcome all. Uh, we will be starting our session at 10:30 a.m. Uh, so we are waiting for other folks to join in. You can keep yourself on mute. Um, for now, we will kick off the session at 10:30. Uh, we'll first uh, do a quick introduction of IoT and CR, and uh, then we will hand it over to the speaker today. Uh, Vinay? Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is the same link meeting given to all other participants, right? Yeah. All others will be joining in the same loop. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Is there any question from anyone? Like any participant? Uh, to you, Suran? No, no, just this. Uh, I thought I have to join any another meeting. No, no, no. It's the same Zoom link. Uh, okay, okay. Great, great. I see Shivani, Sanjeev, Shitij, Abhimanyu, Mayur. There is someone who has joined from phone. Uh, number is 661. Can you speak up? Who, what's your name? If you don't mind. 661-7480240. Hi, this is Vivek here. The volume is very low. I'm not able to hear hear out properly. Vivek, are you joining from your phone? From your mobile phone? Yes, I'm joining from the phone, right. Do you want to log off and log in back again? There is sometime maybe it might be an issue with the the connection. And make sure you are in a proper okay. Okay. proper network area also. Like sometime it could be the network. Sure. Sure we'll do that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kunal, can, you are able to hear me loud and clear, right? Um, or if anyone else can... Mayur, I see your yeah, yeah. iPhone. Yeah, you're yes, I'm able to hear you. Okay, great. Yes, and I'm loud yeah. enough? Okay, great. Thanks. Let me know if you see the screen. Um, this is your presentation. I'm sharing on my desktop. Yeah, I can see this one. Yes, yes. Great, great. Thanks. So we have seven more minutes for others to join. If there are folks on the call who would like to introduce themselves, they can do an introduction. Meanwhile. Yeah, sure. Hi, uh, my name is Shitaj Mathur. Um, I am working as a manager in Dell. And uh, I've uh, been pretty much interested in home automation for a couple of years. I've been applying that onto my own systems. And I just want to learn more and see what are the other possibilities which this can, uh, which, which, we, which home automation brings for us. Great, Sitish. Uh, Sitish, you know Asta from Dell. Uh, she's a very good friend of mine. She works in your uh, IoT and uh, uh, digital transformation department at BD in Gurgaon. I don't know if you uh, know her. Asta Shivastav? Asta Gupta. Uh, okay, no, I don't think I do. But Okay, uh, fine. Yeah. fine. I, I can put you in touch with her. She's uh, in Dell uh, in Gurgaon office. I don't know where are you based. Uh, no, I'm in Gurgaon as well. So. You're in Gurgaon. Okay. Yeah. We okay. can definitely catch up. I'd love to do that. Sure, sure. 
Uh, Shivani, you mind introducing yourself? I thought you're 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 Indian, but I see your photo from of a Chinese girl. Shivani. <laughs> Oh, I think uh, she dropped off. Maybe she, there was a poor connection. Okay. Uh, Avi Manu? Avi Manu, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. I was just unmuting myself. Okay. No, no, I, I'm asking, like, can you, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, if someone doesn't know me, he hasn't been a part of HTNCR for quite some time then. <laughs> Man, you are not a part of IT for quite some time now. <laughs> okay. Blame it on weekend working uh, in current company. Okay. But I, I'll, I'll catch up on everything that I've missed. Okay, okay. But quickly, you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, okay. Hi. Um, uh, I work as a senior technical consultant uh, with Grid Infocom on .NET technology. And I'm interested in just about everything related to technology. Great. Thanks. Okay. Sanjeev, you want to go next? Okay, I think I'm not able to hear Sanjeev. Um, but, uh, Rishi, I see you have just joined. You want to introduce yourself, Rishi? Yeah, sure. So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Rishi and I'm uh, looking after a startup called as Thingify. So, it's an AI and IoT startup. And uh, so, we are building a product uh, that's more into uh, aggregating the uh, IoT devices onto a common platform so that we can build anal analytics on top of it and we can analyze the patterns of usage of different devices and also uh, also like do some better analysis uh, to promote a healthy and uh, better way of living. So that's what we do. Great, Rishi. Um, anyone else? Sanjeev, uh, Ravinder, I see you are there. I'm not able to hear Shivani. I have Varun. Okay, our speaker also have joined. Welcome, Dawal. Welcome to the to the team. Uh, hey, hi, Vinay. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Uh, great. So I think we have four more minutes to start. So we will give uh, the other people to join in the next four minutes, and then uh, uh, we will kick off with a quick introduction of the community. I think most of the people um, know the community, but I will just quickly go through it. And then Dhawal, I will make you the presenter for the day. Sure. Um, and then you can take it over from me. Okay. Um, whoever is not on mute, um, I will request if you can mute yourself so that we don't get background noise. Um, meanwhile, uh, I just want to set the, the, the session context. Uh, if you guys have any questions during the session uh, for Dhawal, uh, I would request you put it on the chat window. Uh, the chat window is right on the screen for you or just hold it. Uh, I think what we can do is like once Dhawal is done with this session, then we can open the floor for Q&A. So I'll be monitoring the questions. Uh, so you can start posting a question on the chat window as soon as you have one. And then I will uh, moderate them for, for our speaker today. We will also run a poll at the end of the session uh, to capture your feedback for today. So please, uh, if you um, uh, want to leave early before the session start, um, take your time later on to uh, at least uh, submit the poll question. Thank you.
Okay, guys, we are at 1029. Um, we'll be starting in the next one minute. If any one of you are having trouble hearing me, uh, just check your uh, settings or maybe log log off and log in back again. I hope the people dialing from a mobile phone are able to now hear me properly. Uh, Vivek, uh, I think you had a challenge, right? Six six one seven four eight. Are you now? Am I am I now clear to you? Like, is it audible now? Okay, uh, so let's uh, let's get going today. Uh, good morning, all. Welcome, everyone. Um, uh, Kunal or Mayur, can one of you just confirm that you can see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, great. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. Thanks for giving us your Sunday and thanks for joining this session. Uh, I think this is going to be very interesting today for us to hear from our speaker, Mr. Dhawal Shah. Um, Dhawal brings a lot of credibility in the domain of smart living and smart home. And I will talk about that in some time. Uh, let me quickly go through what is IIT and PR. Of course, most of you know the community well. Um, apologies for not having a session for a couple of months in the past. Uh, we all were busy with New Year and then our own job and things were uh, probably kind of slow. Um, but now we promise that we are going to go back into full steam over the next um, uh, few months. Okay, we have some workshops also coming up. Uh, IoT NCR, as you all know, is, is now one of the largest IoT community in the world. Uh, in fact, the fourth largest by count. We have crossed 7,000 milestone of number of members. Uh, we are focused on IoT, but not just IoT, but any technology that is relevant to IoT uh, and tangential to it, whether it is AI, machine learning, or AR, VR, big data, uh, cloud, blockchain, and so on. So we uh, tend to like create our uh, setups and our events or workshops around these topics and to bring the folks together uh, who want to learn uh, about these topics. Now, more importantly, uh, I think our community is very developer focused. Like, we have a lot of students, a lot of developers uh, in our community and quite a few number of professionals from corporates who are already working in this area for some time now. So it is purely driven by the passion of uh, the people who drive this community, which are the volunteers. I, uh, uh, some of them are already on the call today, which is uh, Kunal and Mayur and Rishi and so on. Um, uh, we have executed more than now 50 plus workshops um, and seminars, uh, which have included more than 2,300 participants now. So these numbers are a little old, but we have covered like almost every topic under the sun uh, for IoT so far. We have trained and educated more than 200 uh, students now, 50 plus faculties in various colleges, including IIM Ahmedabad, uh, FMS Delhi, and so on. Um, we have various knowledge partners that we work with, uh, from Microsoft, SAP, IBM, to ATL, Nagaro, and Lenovo. Um, and we also have multiple partners in the area of media uh, or community partners. For example, recently we are a partner of EFI, which is holding a conference in Bangalore on IoT called as IoT Show. Uh, where we actually promote their event in our community and give them access to the people who are interested to join the conference and maybe some discounts to the members who want to register for a particular event or a conference. And uh, uh, also we support many startups. Um, we started this program um, very early on in our life cycle. So the community was launched in uh, 2015, November. And since then we have been running multiple events and workshops uh, across Delhi and CR region. Um, including having presence in some of the conferences. Um, now here is what we um, ask you that if any one of you are working for a startup, is looking for a platform, uh, typically we run this program. It is, it is non-commercial, it is free actually. Uh, we don't charge for this um, for, to the startup if they want to come and do an event or a session with us. Of course, if it goes beyond the, uh, that, then we can work out a model where we can uh, communicate with you. The idea is that you want to hire resources, you want to put a job posting you have, or you want to basically do some kind of a pilot project using the resources from the community. Uh, th those are many different areas that you can engage with us. 
In fact, one of the uh, thing that we are now driving is uh, trying to launch our first lab, an IoT NCR uh, physical lab, which will be likely in Gurgaon to start with. Uh, we will announce it uh, as as and when it is closed uh, completely with the partner. Uh, and this lab will be open to every member uh, on a particular model, which will give you access to you. Uh, you can come and then practice IoT uh, things there, or work with other people and collaborate with other members, or even uh, uh, maybe talk to the SMEs, subject matter experts, who might come there and give some time to the uh, lab members. Okay. Uh, this is some of the uh, startups that uh, I was talking about uh, who have promoted themselves on our platform in the past. In fact, one of the conferences where we were part of, we had some startups who showcased their products on our booth uh, to the um, conference attendees, including uh, Leaf, GV, Banao, and so on. So, uh, some of the success story very quickly. Now, IoT and CN, as I said, is a, is a not for profit organization. We work uh, on an with an interest of uh, expanding the reach of IoT knowledge in India and beyond. Um, the idea is to make sure that people come together and get some kind of uh, knowledge and access to various resources. So in the past, companies like Nagaro have hired members from IoT and CR. Companies like Mauser and RS Components have promoted their hardware products that they sell for IoT on our platform. Uh, early adopters have been given to some of the startups uh, or uh, we were part of one of the funding event uh, by Business World and Catapult, what is products are, uh, which was held at uh, IIT Delhi uh, in collaboration with Amazon Launchpad. And some of the IoT and CS startups were invited there through our uh, collaboration with them uh, as a community partner. Uh, of course, we also work with EFI, which is Electronics for Media. Uh, we promote ourselves on st your story and reach out to a larger audience within India and outside. And uh, of course, one of the 3D uh, printing enterprise, which is Pyware and 3D Paradise, which are part of our booth, uh, also were able to generate some business leads from, uh, from that particular engagement. Um, this is one of the very, very important focus for us is how do we train and educate the, the younger generation, the students in, uh, um, in India, uh, get, get access to IoT knowledge uh, and do some hands-on as well. Uh, in fact, a lot of uh, the colleges now have started reaching out to us. The only challenge we have is the number of volunteers with us and our hands and legs. Uh, there is no uh, deficiency in terms of the passion, uh, but there is, there is some, something we need is we need more hands and legs to work with us uh, as volunteers who can then actually get trained and become our uh, torch bearer of IT and CR in, in India. We have some of them on the call today. We have also uh, not started talking to a few colleges um, in terms of uh, setting up labs and other things with them uh, within Delhi NCR for now. But we have aspiration to grow beyond and we have launched a chapter in Bangalore um, recently. It's a small chapter. Uh, Ravinder, who is also on the call, drives that chapter for us uh, based out of Bangalore. And uh, a few other people help us. Um, uh, the idea is to see if we can grow the community uh, as big as we have done in Delhi in Bangalore and uh, do some workshops and hands on there and then maybe move to uh, bombay and other other cities okay uh, some of the topics we have covered so you can look through this later on we can share the slides of course with all of you who have registered for the event today um, uh, moving on some of the feedback from our members in the past um, and how can you contribute this is the last slide very important one so of course uh, like like how the world has graced its time today for us you can be a speaker, a guest speaker on our platform. Uh, you can be a volunteer. And we are looking for more volunteers now. So we need a lot of volunteers. We already have close to 18 of them with us. Uh, but we need more hands and legs, as I said, who can come up, uh, work with us, help us in your free time. It doesn't have to be a bounded uh, timeline or a bounded job that you'll be doing for us. But it can be something that you can contribute uh, to us. So if you have interest, you can either put your name on the chat window or you can reach out to me, Vinay Solanki, separately. Of course, I'm sure you all of you are part of our WhatsApp or Telegram group. If you're not, then again, put your phone number or your WhatsApp number on the chat window. And I or Mayur will add you to that uh, group. Uh, you can be a knowledge partner. This is where we work with uh, corporates and startups who want to share their knowledge to the community. A location partner. Uh, this one's something we have been very lucky with in the past. We get typically location that we need for our events either through a co-working space or a college or a startup or a corporate. 
in the past. Uh, you can be our community partners. So of course, we work with some communities that, uh, where we cross collaborate and cross promote our events and get access to each other members. Uh, and the last, uh, of course, if you um, want, if you know a media house uh, or someone as an agency who can promote IoT and CR as a community, uh, welcome. Uh, but more than that, you all as an individual are, uh, are our word of mouth to other members and other network that you have uh, to your, to your uh, disposal, where you can talk about what you gain here and you can bring more experts or members to the community. Uh, more importantly, we have we have 7,000 members, but of course, it's not that all of them are active. The active count are, is, is lower. So we want to make sure that people get engaged and become an active member with us. We will do our best to keep doing events uh, like, the, like the one today and also workshop which is coming up on 16 March on LoRa. That workshop is a hands-on session on LoRa module, LoRa gateway, and which will teach people how to set up a gateway and how to connect the device to LoRa gateway uh, and, and use the LoRa connectivity. We are also setting up and planning some events coming up in April on building self-driving car, an autonomous car, which will be a series of workshops, one after the other, uh, teaching you on how to build different components of a self-driving car. Uh, and then there will be some more uh, seminars and webinars coming up uh, on different use cases of IoT. I will be taking one, a couple of them myself. So I work very actively in IoT. I work for Lenovo as a head for Asia Pacific and uh, Middle East and uh, have been into IoT industry for around five to six years right now. So that's something I can also contribute. Okay, so that's it from my side from IoT NCR perspective. Um, you are already part of our meetup group, which you see, see the link on this slide, meetup.com. You can also join our LinkedIn group uh, or our Facebook and Twitter and follow us on Twitter. Um, um, more importantly, if any one of you are not on the Telegram, please um, join the Telegram group. Mayur has already posted the link on WhatsApp. Um, if you're not on WhatsApp, then uh, post your number here on the chat window. We will add it to WhatsApp. That's where we do all our active conversations and discussions. Um, so any questions for IP and CR, I would request you put it on the chat window or you can talk to me or Mayur later on. Uh, so I will end the IoT NCR session for now and the introduction. Um, and I'm going to make Dhawal who is our speaker tonight, the um, presenter for today. Just one second. Dhawal, I'm making you the host. Um, so that, uh, I think you should get a notification now. Uh, I've already stopped uh, sharing my screen. Um, and you can now share your screen. So, yes. yeah. And before you do that, let, guys, let me introduce Dhawal, uh, Mr. Dhawal Shah. Dhawal has a lot of credentials. Um, so I won't be able to cover all of them. And Vina, it's Dhawal Doshi. Yeah, Dhawal Doshi. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know why I keep telling you Dhawal Shah. I'm so sorry about that. Most of these are Shah, so it's easy. Yeah, to... yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I grew up in Bombay. So all my Gujarati friends are Shah. So that is actually... <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dhawal. No, uh, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so uh, just to give you guys, uh, guys a background, uh, Dhawal runs a startup uh, called Smart Home NX, which is one of the very, very well-known uh, startup in the smart home area. Uh, Dhawal and I are also part of uh, a, a group called as IET IoT, which is uh, an IT is an organization based out of Europe, the UK, and it has a chapter in India which drives the IoT initiatives in India, one of the very, uh, I think a very well-known chapter, they have conferences uh, once every year in Bangalore. And Dhawal is a speaker, uh, he speaks on uh, various topics under the smart living umbrella. I've already shared his TEDx talk with uh, you guys on WhatsApp. Uh, so someone I, I always look forward to hear. So over to you Dhawal, um, and then uh, the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh... Thanks for those kind words. Uh, I will go ahead and try to share my screen directly and right, jump right into the presentation. Uh, just one second. So uh, I guess you guys can see my face. Uh, yeah, uh, I can, we can see your video now. But I'll try to. I'm just so going that, to yeah. yeah, there is a share option, Alt S, if you want to use a shortcut. And then you can show you your desktop. You can share the PPT uh, on the desktop or whatever, whichever file you want to share at the bottom. And okay, one second. 
Or if you press Alt S, it should come up. Yeah. Do you know the Mac shortcut to that? Oh, the Mac. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, there is a green icon at the bottom of the screen. Ah, I see it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Share. Share. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. okay, great. So I'm just going to jump into the presentation. And okay, great. I think you guys can see the presentation. Yes, uh, yeah. I'll put it on full screen. Uh, yeah. Sometimes when I put this on full screen, it doesn't. It, it gets, uh, you know, one second. It gets uh, cropped, so I'm not okay. sure if this will show, but I'll try my best. Y yeah, let me check it for you. If, uh, otherwise, you can just uh, maximize. Yeah, I can see it fine. I can see your first slide, IoT Global. Yeah, the slide is clear, though. Okay, great. Perfect. So, I'm just going to stop video. Uh, okay, great. Uh, uh, you guys are able to hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh. Really. Great. So, uh, first of all, you know, uh, the presentation is about 32 slides long. So, I have tried to, you know, I honestly haven't tried to really truncate it or, you know, summarize it in a big way. I've sort of put in a lot of information and, you know, uh, made it a little more comprehensive. Uh, however, I will try to run through some areas which I feel are, you know, which which I feel you know based on the audience that it's not very uh, I would not say relevant but not something that we need to get into in the details. Uh, if you guys would like me to come back to the presentation, happy to do that, and you know come back to a slide and discuss something further. Second is that uh, you know uh, of course I'm I'm there to answer your questions at the end of it. Uh, and the second thing is that you know it's it's a presentation which is more from the perspective of a consumer, right? Uh, I, I I think I think. Most of my presentations, I try to bring in that perspective of a customer or a layman uh, and, and think about the industry in that sense rather than someone who's from that industry. Uh, you know, uh, briefly speaking, you know, uh, I, I come from, a, from, from the IoT space, past two, three years that I've been in it. I've been passionate about it for a long time. Uh, but uh, I think I, I bring a different perspective uh, because I'm not a technical guy. Uh, while at the same time I do understand uh, what technology goes into it and you know what really what role it plays in in our lives uh, in a you know uh, in a daily basis. So I'm a first-hand user of the so a lot of these technologies, and I think a lot of, lot of what I'll bring across here is going to be around that. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, I'll just dive in. Um, you know, I have uh, divided this presentation into three sections. And uh, the first one is about the state of the smart home in India. So a lot of talk around smart homes and challenges around adoption, the challenges about the industry not having picked up stems from the fact that there are some uh, hardcore baseline problems, right? Um, whether you talk about standardization uh, in terms of protocols, in terms of ecosystems, uh, or you talk about brand loyalty. For a, for a, for a uh, technology and for a category, I would say, right? A category uh, like uh, smart homes. It's very difficult for a customer to say, hey, you know what? This is the brand that I'm loyal to because it's not really seen that much. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, if you look at the marketing life cycle, it's not really seen that life cycle. And there are still people who are early adopters in that state. So it's a very immature market. So of course, this is one of the key challenges, right? How do you, uh, move from it being a market which is extremely to something that becomes mainstream. Um, I think another very important part uh, is you know product development, uh, which is uh, in absence of familiarity. Now let me you know when I I'll, I'll get a little deeper into this as I as I move forward in the presentation. Uh, but to you know put it in short, imagine trying to sell a touch screen. Uh, that Steve Jobs did years ago, right? Uh, it was a, a touch screen with a touch keyboard on it, a QWERTY keyboard on a touch screen and trying to sell to consumers and, uh, you know, uh, folks who are used to a QWERTY keyboard, right? Uh, you know, you can consider uh, that being, uh, them being, you know, BlackBerry users. Uh, there was a clear cut absence of familiarity, right? Unless, until and unless the touch screen came into being, uh, and people actually started using it, it was hard for someone to actually adopt it, right? And people were not familiar with what a touchscreen does, right? Pinch to zoom wasn't something that everyone knew that 
you could do, right? But now it's intuitive. You get a touch screen phone or you see a touch screen, you try to pinch to zoom, right? Uh, it's it's become very intuitive and it's become something that's very familiar for an audience, for a for a customer to or a consumer to actually do that. That's not something that's happened in the smart home space, right? People aren't familiar with what a smart home is. You don't go and look for a smart home solution and have benchmarks or have comparisons or have products that you have spoken, you know, that you have used in the past to compare it with, right? So another big challenge of an immature market. Uh, Another very uh, important uh, and something very relevant to you know folks who are in the IoT space is data monetization, right? What are we doing with the data? Uh, I think there is you know you talk about you know streams of data that you can actually get from you know IoT devices, whether it's at an enterprise level or a you know smart city level. Uh, same is the case with data that you get from a home, right? Can you build business models around that, right? And are there monetization models around it for someone to actually, you know, invest in uh, uh, invest in getting that data from from a consumer? And moreover, how do you even do that, right? Because uh, it's a privacy concern. It's a big privacy concern. Um, another big challenge, specifically in India, is that of Salesforce, right? Uh, selling a smart home solution is not same as selling a you know a television. Or selling, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, an iPhone or, or or a smartphone, it requires far more evolved knowledge of uh, you know a customer's preference uh, in terms of where he lives, what he does, all the way to you know the kind of uh, home that he stays in, what's the layout of that home, uh, you know, what are the technologies that might work well, uh, you know, is there a booster required? Do they have good uh, network access or not? Because that's still a you know big problem. Uh, so, so Salesforce needs to be far more well-trained and equipped to understand uh, a, con a consumer and not just the technology. While it's easy for you to say that, hey, you know what, my technology can, you know, do this or, you know, it, it's got biometric or it's got, you know, uh, it's built on a blockchain platform or it's built on uh, Zigbee and, you know, it, uh, it, uh, it requires uh, the low bandwidth. It can even work uh, in an offline environment. While all those things sound great, uh, the reality is that to to build a to build a technology that's sophisticated requires you to understand technology well. But to sell it to customers, a product which is a high tech product requires you to understand the customers really well, right? So simplifying a complex feature and making it contextual to a consumer is far more important, and that requires you to reinvent your sales force, reinvent the way you think about selling these products. And, uh, and and actually build that capability in house uh, the other other you know problems are i think i think very very uh, very basic which most people here would be aware of is interoperability privacy and security right uh, most products don't talk to each other uh, there is there is still uh, there is still a uh, you know i would say there are still big tech players like you know amazon and google uh, and all these guys who are creating interfaces and uh, there's still a you know th there is there is no one player who's doing this right and they don't talk with each other so i think if you are to build a smart home as a customer uh, it's a big challenge right understanding which is the right technology for you which is the right product for you so you're talking about you know uh, an industry where there is uh, you know i would say extreme fragmentation of products and solutions uh, while at the same time you're talking about you know uh, bringing it all together uh, for one single customer, right? Because one single customer is not going to get the same security solution or the same, uh, you know, uh, lighting solution from 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 the same uh, product uh, from the same brand, right? And uh, of course, you know, with all this happening, uh, system integrators are coping up with this uh, rapid evolution of products, right? So, uh, just like in the smart city space, just like in any other space where system integrators are you know, still figuring out what's 5G going to do for them or what's the, you know, what are the services that are deployable on 4G. Here you're talking about system integrators who are trying to cope up with which is the best brand that I should give to my customer, which is the best product, which is the best feature and which is the, which is, which is the product that will, or which is the solution rather that will actually serve his, uh, serve his needs in the long run and not just be a vanity solution. Because let's be very honest, smart homes are vanity. Right. Uh, no one really sees smart homes as utility products. And, you know, uh, I think smart homes is a more evolved uh, term for home automation. Right. It used to be 
around RF. It used to be around IR. It used to be around, you know, Zigbee and, you know, it still is around Zigbee and all that, and KNX, uh, but now it's become smart home because you have, uh, you know, more AI and IoT devices coming in and there's, there's more smarter use cases that can be developed with it. Uh, so let's, you know, let's talk about the major problem here, right? And uh, according to me, uh, this is a big, uh, big challenge uh, that is building user centricity into the ecosystem. I think if, if you were to think about this, uh, and I, I typically start with this example, what you see here is a beautiful looking wine glass. Uh, but as you can imagine, uh, it serves no use case, right? Uh, you know, you might have the most high def camera on your smart camera or your, you know, security camera. Uh, you might have the, you know, uh, best AI capabilities, but unless and until it serves a use case, in this case, you know, it is drinking out of the wine glass, uh, which is, as you can see, not possible. You know, if you can imagine drinking out of this, you'll realize that you can't actually drink out of this wine glass. Uh, so while, you know, high tech is great, or does it serve a use case? That's the, that's the pivotal uh, challenge right now that we are, we are trying to figure out, right? Um, I want to show you another little close to home example of technology. Uh, has, you know, uh, has anyone heard of Google Wave? Uh, anyone, you can maybe raise your hand. Uh, there are 21 people here. And I would love to see if anyone's really heard of Google Wave. Okay. Okay, so I think no one's heard of Google Wave. But, uh, you know, just to uh, tell you, uh, Google Wave was essentially a tool which was sort of a, you know, a, a Google Labs product, you can say. It was a product that was launched by Google way back in, I think, uh, 2000 or so. And this product, 2001, maybe 2001, 2003. And uh, this product was essentially, uh, I, I don't know what it is, right? Uh, so let me tell you what it can do. You can see on the left hand side, there is a navigation, right? Uh, you have inbox, uh, you have, you know, spam. So it's sort of like an email plus you have contacts below it who you can chat with or what they like to call. You can inter in, you can actually have a wave with, so you can, you can just like you create a new Google hangout or a Google or a Facebook group, you create a wave on this. And then when you create, start creating that wave, you can play games, you can, you know, exchange emails. And this was essentially a product which had a lot of different capabilities, but it was not positioned well, right? People didn't know what to do with this. There was no use case for this product. Like, is it for social media? Is it a you know, social sharing application? Is it meant for work? If it's meant for work, why should I use this? Why should I not use, you know, uh, just a simple IM and email alongside? Uh, there was no reason for it. So why it brings together a lot of different features there was really no use case to it. And this, this product essentially failed and they ultimately shut it down because there was no use case for this product. And uh, eventually this got evolved and this turned into something else, which I'll come to later. Uh, but that is somewhere, you know, that's, that's what uh, the smart home industry is at at this stage, right? While someone who's in this space as a, you know, as, as someone who's been creating content for it and, you know, aggregating products, uh, and, and solutioning these products, it's, it's very, uh, it, it's very unfortunate to see that there is not much innovation happening beyond just integrating features. And there is one competitor who's trying to topple another one with something which is better than what the other, other guy has done, uh, just for the sake of it, uh, to give you a simple example, uh, you know, I think it's great that, you know, there are so many lighting options available in the market. There are so many players who come up with smart LED lights, but if you look at the product, it's a, it's a commodity. There is nothing, uh, there's nothing extraordinary about it, uh, beyond it being controllable through your voice or through your phone. And such is the case, uh, with most smart home devices. So you come up with a product, which is a product that you use in your home and you connect it to the internet you give it an interface through a mobile application and then integrate it with Alexa. And there you go. You have a voice activated smart home. I think, which is fantastic. I think that is a very nice 
and there's a good progression when it comes to ease of use, uh, according to me. Uh, but the price that we are asking for it is not justified. And my problem is not with the price. My problem is, is the value addition that we are doing, right? If I am going to be able to control my home using my voice, I think that's great. But you know what? I'm not going to spend that extra dollar just to be able to do that, right? Unless it comes at the same price at which I get a normal light in my home. So I think this is a, this is a core challenge in the smart home space. And to give you another simple example, uh, you know, uh, over here, what you see is, you know, uh, the Wink uh, app where, you know, you can control everything through the phone. And right below that, what you see is a Kickstarter project, uh, which is, I think, uh, uh, they've bagged a lot of uh, funds and right now they're selling in the market. It's called Pinto Feed, right? This product essentially is a IoT product which dispenses uh, food for your pets. So I don't know if you can see the difference between these two. While one is just creating an interface for a smart living solution, right? Where, oh, you have an existing smoke sensor, I can, uh, smoke alarm, I can arm it or I can see the status of it using my, uh, you know, using my phone. And right below that, you have a solution that's actually solving a real problem. I'm outside my home. I'm at office oftentimes. My pet is at home. I have to tell my neighbors to come in and feed the pet. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to depend on my neighbors. I want to be able to do it myself. And here you go. You have a product that actually does that. So you, you know, use a hand gesture or you just tap a button on your phone and it dispenses the cat food and the cat can come in, have its food and go back. You, uh, you know, this is one device. There's another device that also lets you actually look at the pet and play with the pet and, you know, the pet can actually see you as well. So I think th this is a more deeper solution to problems rather than saying that, hey, you know what? I just built a great IoT product and it's connected to the web and you know you can use the, your voice to control it or you can use your mind to control it or whatever else, right? Uh, another big problem is the industry value chain, right? Uh, unfortunately, uh, what's happened is that, uh, and I think, I think it's, very, uh, it's a natural progression as with any industry, you have a customer who used to buy lights or who used to buy home products. Uh, or who used to buy, you know, uh, hardware from a retailer, right? A retailer being someone who has a showroom. And that guy could be selling ply, he could be selling electrical gadgets like lights, he could be selling speakers and televisions and so on and so forth. Now the same guy is actually selling you smart home solutions. Uh, so just think about this a little bit and tell me the amount of credibility that, that the retailer has in taking a decision about your home and how you're going to integrate smart technology into your home and contextualizing it to your lifestyle without even stepping into your home, right? So what's happening is the same guys who are dealing in electrical components and now selling smart home solutions, which has progressed a little more to say that you have independent system integrators or consultants who actually come into your home and who actually talk about, uh, I'm sorry, who actually, you know, look at your home, uh, study, what kind of an environment you live in, uh, look at how your Wi-Fi is set up and then give you a solution based on your electrical layout. So I think the smart home of the future cannot be built on these value chains, right? Uh, because there are several issues that happen because of this. One, uh, you know, uh, more middlemen bring in, you know, more commercials. Uh, two, uh, there is literally no space for innovation. So essentially what's happening is there is a manufacturer who's building a device and there are hundreds of resellers of that device, they're not adding any value except for being a sales force or except for being someone who goes in, reaches out and has a distribution network. Now, in the age of e-commerce, we need to rethink this, right? So if you look at the value chain, uh, which, I've, uh, which, which I've taken an excerpt from one of my white papers, uh, I'm happy to share the white paper and this presentation with everyone, uh, you know, uh, so when I can, you know, surely share this out, I'll send it to him. Um, so you have obviously the network provider, here's your infrastructure, your bandwidth, whether it's geo or whoever else. Uh, then you have device manufacturers that you're looking at smart hubs, touch panel switches, smart speakers, uh, you know, uh, uh, IOT enabled uh, fridges or, you know, you name any device that you use in your home. Uh, and then you talk about, uh, then you have application developers, uh, you know, there's a mobile app that you need to control that home. And then you need uh, have a solution provider. He's the guy who's the consultant, the system integrator, who's having uh, you know who's going to come into your home, 
uh, give you an integrated solution for your lighting or for your security or for everything all together by bringing multiple brands and multiple solutions to build your smart home. And obviously at the end of it, you have the end user, the, who's a homeowner or resident. Uh, if you were to go beyond just the homeowner, uh, you can think of this value chain in any setup. You can think of this value chain even in a smart city. You can think of this value chain even in a you know a smart uh, you, know, you know a smart hospital or a smart retail store, uh, right? Uh, uh, all the different solutions that we are building right now as part of this industry to to move forward and to take that next uh, leap in in IoT, right? Uh, now, if you look at this, uh, where is it that we are lacking? I think. You know, as an industry, uh, we are doing well as network providers. There is a lot. There is a lot happening there. Like you have uh, intent, and you have uh, you have companies who are coming in to say, "Hey, you know what? Let's standardize. Let's get a protocol in place so we get low bandwidth. Uh, you know, uh, IoT frameworks uh, or IoT protocols which will empower smart cities or empower smart homes or whatever else." Right? Uh, I think I think that's great. There are some device manufacturers out there, but honestly, most of them are me too. So you get, you know, I think one good innovation is is the smart speaker and the voice, which is a great interface. But there is no deeper device, at least out of the Indian stables, that we can say that, oh, wow, you know what, this product is game changing. This changes the way I live my life, right? Uh, for that matter, I was having a small debate on the WhatsApp group, if you guys are on it recently, like just a few minutes before this uh, uh, webinar about how, there is a need to, you know, uh, like like you have a dishwasher which is providing some value, uh, and you know, a gentleman actually brought out the fact that why should I pay for something which is so expensive when it comes to smart home solutions, right? Uh, because most smart home solutions don't provide that high value. So I think those high value devices which I which I was talking about uh, is something that's still missing, right? Uh, I mean, touch panel switches are not a solution. Touch panel switches are just an aesthetic need. Uh, for a home, it's not IoT. It may be voice enabled, but no one really cares about that. So uh, while this is something that I am a part of, I, I trade in these solutions. Uh, I strongly feel that there is a need for more, you know, uh, more creative products uh, that 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 solve some problems. Um, the the other interesting part is the application developer. Uh, unfortunately. The application developer and guys who are building apps on Google or Android or people who are building apps, you know, on on the cell phone, on I would say on on mobile or even uh, IoT based, uh, you know, uh, backend applications, uh, whether it's you know data analytics or all of that, I think uh, that's that's lacking, right? Uh, so I think there is a lot that's happening in the in the space of uh, you know backend data analytics and things like that because. That's the kind of product that India is known for. We are good at doing great backend IT stuff where we can, you know, serve to larger conglomerates and larger companies to solve their problems and B2B sales can happen there. So, you know, I think there was a startup who just introduced, uh, you know, uh, right now before the webinar who work on data analytics. I forget the name, but if you guys are building something for the B2B space, I think that's amazing. Uh, and 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 B two B is going to be your audience. You're going to get sales. You're going to cater to companies outside of India. But you know what? There are problems in India. There are problems uh, of 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 uh, you know accessibility in India. There are problems of networks in India. There are problems and uh, you know issues in in households in India. And there are apps that we need that can work well with great hardware. And there is space to innovate there. So I think there is a huge uh, deficit of people looking at the space in this value chain where there is there are apps that are built uh, which go beyond just application control and which enable smarter living. So for example, there are apps available in Singapore for, you know, uh, which, which is by the Singapore government where they have built an app especially for elderly people. So it's an app that elderly people will use in their home. They connect, it connects to IoT devices. It tracks accessibility, it tracks the IoT, it tracks the uh, elderly people and in case of any, you know, uh, smoke detection or in case of any, uh, uh, any, any problem, uh, the authorities get a notification and, you know, their kids can be notified and, uh, you know, it's like 911 but it's completely automated, right? And emergency response teams will be there in their place. So, there is a clear-cut vision to not just build a superficial hardware device, but an ecosystem around it, 
and that ecosystem is not possible without application developers and people who are uh, you know who are into coding and to me that's a huge uh, that, that's a huge opportunity uh, for new business and growth and you know uh, people who are trying to build careers in this um, of course the solution provider uh, is is another integral part right uh, professional solution providers who know who understand these technologies and who are able to bring these technologies together for a for a for an individual uh, is 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 the need of the art there are very few people who do this and who do this really well uh, who identify and who curate the right kind of solutions uh, what we have tried to do what i have tried to do with my venture is exactly do that go beyond lighting control look at robotic vacuum cleaners look at you know uh, ambient lighting uh, we are now looking at uh, you know sensor based uh, solar uh, uh, you know uh, glass windows and things like that I, i think i think there is a need for people to think uh, about the customer again over here and bring in those solutions uh, and of course at the end of it the end user uh, there is a huge shift that's happening in india we have you know we have sort of you know we have we have already seen uh, how we have just skipped the desktops and skipped the laptops and directly moved on to uh you know connected smartphones i think end users in india are going to see that kind of leap even when it comes to smartphones we are going to skip all the apps we are going to skip all the you know uh, all those interfaces where you know oh you can control stuff using your app and we are going to move to interfaces like voice and i think there's a huge opportunity there again to build content which is multilingual uh, right uh, build voice uh, voice enabled devices uh, that can understand different dialects and uh, Uh, to me amazon and google google are far behind in that uh, and there is a lot more than we can contribute at our end as as you know as someone who's who are from india uh, so yours your your are the opportunities for the key stakeholders right platforms and ecosystems is an opportunity to gain consumer behavior insights right within their home uh, you know by by actually uh, you know by actually getting uh, you know getting those insights you can actually serve uh, an experience that's that's much better so for example what google home and amazon is already doing is serving ads personalized ads uh, to people who are searching for something using their voice right uh, so obviously they are uh, not interruptive it's only when you actually call out to them uh, but at the same time it's it's adding value by giving a personalized experience which is possible through the data that's available so i think platforms and ecosystems need to need to think about how to get that data and of course uh, not just get get the data but also uh, you know uh, do something with it right uh, the second is the opportunity for you know device and application manufacturers uh, you know how do we how do we integrate it to our core business right so if you're going to build a device don't just build a device and stop there build an ecosystem or build a service around it So Alexa and Amazon are great devices everyone's wowing about the fact that you know you can talk to a smart speaker but the reality is that when it's going to start becoming so uh easy and so common for users to actually call and use their voice to buy uh, to to do anything in their home imagine what Amazon can do by allowing users to make purchases via voice right so they have actually integrated the smart speakers to their actual core value proposition which is the retail store right which is the e-commerce store so i think if we were to think a little more like amazon right in different niches i think we can innovate tremendously and i have you know i can share an example of this it's not in my presentation but you know i i know of a company uh, which actually ha- uh, you know manufactures uh, you know uh, baby weighing scales right and so you have a weighing scale for your small toddler or an infant newborn and you can actually weigh your baby and based on the weight of the baby it can actually uh, you know send you uh, recommendations on the app as to the nutrition as to the sleep cycle and things like that and help you basically nurture a more healthy baby and i think that's a fantastic use case it's such a small niche so you don't have to think about solving problems for the whole world you have to think about solving problem for that one specific niche customer it could be the double income no kids couples it could be the nuclear families and the kind of people who are there it could be the millennials who are now renting out homes rather than buying homes and you could be solving a problem just for them right and i think that's where we need to think beyond just 
creating a device and think about what are the services we can add on to it or what are the additional solutions which also brings in better revenue streams which brings in subscription models which brings in so many other innovative business models for for you uh, rather than upfront uh, revenue that you make on a device sale then of course uh, you know software and apps uh, where you know uh, I, i think I, it's it's basically you know coming down to the same thing uh, it it's an opportunity to provide a value added service so like uh, you know spotify premium sub- subscription for spotify enabled speakers at home uh, or you know uh, for cloud security for a lot of cameras a lot of smart cameras out there they charge you for cloud uh, for the cloud right uh, for storing your security footage and that's essentially getting you recurring revenue so i think there are huge opportunities for all these key stakeholders and there are opportunities in disguise right they actually uh you know uh, they actually tell you that okay you know what things are anyways not working out why don't we innovate in this space so that they work out and there is an opportunity to make more money there uh so we did a true litmus test uh, what i'm sharing here is a survey that we did with about 5000 indian households and uh, you know this was done with uh, you know mumbai pune bangalore uh delhi some other metros and some non metros also were a part of this survey and the results are really surprising right i mean uh, one might think yaar who needs smart homes but there are real problems people actually talk about these when you ask them and i i think it comes from the space that you know people don't really think about these things uh, because no one really cares about a home in in the sense of its functionality most people care about how it looks right so when we actually probe them and we ask them about these specific questions uh, there were some very surprising results one was obviously 20% use a smart home system or a smart device uh, what it means is that they were either using a smart tv or a you know a, a connected smart speaker or something like that uh, so 20% is is definitely a very high number considering you know uh, considering that one might think the penetration numbers are very low uh, but yeah of course this is not just smart home systems this also includes smart, like products like smart tvs smart speakers which are not full fledged smart home systems but they are smart devices uh, what do most of us consider when buying smart technology one is obviously benefits and personalization um, right how how can it personalize to my lifestyle uh, second is how much maintenance does it need uh, and then about safety whether it's safe right if there's a if there's a security camera is it going to share my feed with anyone else are people going to be able to hack it and things like that but interestingly it's a, it's not a very high percentage of people who actually care about this right uh, and then the last is actually reducing power bills so it it sort of this you know uh, builds on the builds on 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 the uh, hypothesis that you know which which i made earlier that you know we need high value products right all these baseline problems exist but people will inevitably move on and start using those things like people move down from qwerty to touch screens uh, if the value is value proposition is there right now i can't ever imagine going back to half a screen being a keyboard and half a screen being a screen uh, in fact we are now having you know infinity displays and things like that so people want more of that but uh, we are not providing right what's keeping most of us on this fence i think the most obvious one uh, here is you know it's expensive uh, another very interesting one is they don't know where to buy it can you imagine that there are so many guys in the smart homes in smart solution space smart living space smart devices uh, they sell on flipkart they sell on amazon but people don't know that right and it's very interesting because uh, we were in fact in talks we are still in talks with with a, with with an e-commerce giant to actually figure this out because no one goes to an amazon and looks for a smart air purifier because they don't know that anything like that exists right so i think that's another very interesting uh, insight that people don't know where to go and buy this right uh, and of course people don't know how to use it uh, interestingly a lot of people also think that you know it's hard to maintain uh, and the least for you know the least uh, i would say concern is is data right now let me just put it this way that uh, we have not come up with these conclusions as um you know uh these these 25 23 15 percent we have not come up with these i think it will be too expensive uh as a as as a text and as a you know uh multiple choice question to consumers 
what we did was we actually probed them and we asked them what do they think about it and then we asked them to rank them in a particular order right so it was not about saying that x number of people felt that data is isn't 100% safe it was about uh, the importance of uh, you know uh, of these uh, uh, barriers that keeps indians on the fence when it comes to buying smart home solutions right and the most important one for them was expense and the least important was the data uh, so this is uh, you know about embracing smart home tech and uh, you know uh, and obviously the another question was do we currently use a smart home system or a smart device uh, most people uh, so i think this is a typo here this is not do we currently use do this was about do we see ourselves you because uh, you know so the, so the idea was that to actually ask them that uh, with the kind of smart devices that they already use do they look at having incremental devices coming into that and do they look at adding more devices to it so for example if i have a smart uh, smartphone or a smart speaker or a smart tv do i look at am i looking at adding another product to that ecosystem in the long run um, a lot of people were on the fence here that okay maybe maybe not a lot of people said yes uh, majority being yes we would like to add right so people are used to smartphones they are having more wifi in their homes than they used to um, and uh, all these things have started to matter so they are open to it provided there's a good solution out there uh, would we pay more for a home with smart devices and manufacturing features now this is a very very interesting one uh, you know it's it's something that actually changes the way we are doing business and very very pivotal right now because the real estate market is really going through a crisis they are not able to sell their sell their uh, inventory and a lot of people actually said they are willing to spend more if the builder is providing them smart solutions or smart features as a part of that home and uh, i'm pretty happy to say that uh, you know we have done a collaboration right now with edelweiss and uh, for a lot of builders across india we are actually going to be smartening up their homes before they sell it so we so so they you know we did a very small pilot in bombay and they loved the demo and they loved you know the consumer walk ins were much higher because when they were coming into other homes they were just seeing the normal you know okay this is the balcony this is what it is this is you know these are the things and then the moment smart home solutions were brought in they were more intrigued they were thinking about convenience they were thinking about those things and a lot of younger audience was found this very very appealing um another very interesting one um uh, this is interesting to me because uh while one might think that people are not willing to spend 1 to 3 lakhs in a smart home uh we got 37% of the people actually saying they would be willing to spend between 1 to 3 lakhs uh of course 48% you know said that they would long, not look at spending more than a lakh uh but 37% committed to saying i wouldn't mind spending a lakh to 3 lakhs in building a smart home right which is i think phenomenal um of course you know what do you consider when buying smart home technology one is that it should connect to you know obviously smart phone which is like the most obvious thing that everyone wants to buy uh people looked at smart televisions because that's all they knew about they actually feel smart refrigerators is something they would use and a washing machine and laptops which is actually you know uh, already a smart device in a way so interestingly uh, here if you notice that uh, you know almost everything they are talking about are products or solutions that they already use in their home right uh, there is not enough awareness to say that they want to buy a smart speaker right so they actually talk about those categories and those products that are already there in their home so i think there is a huge awareness uh issue and also there is a huge opportunity for people to think about building uh things that we can do on the refrigerator which could be smart on the washing machine especially in india we, when we have you know lack of water uh, when we have you know uh, not not great electricity can we do something in refrigerators right um and of course people are thinking about these things when it comes to making chores easy uh this was a upfront question that we asked because i think this is important right this helps us innovate in those areas are there smart devices that we can build to tidy up indian homes 
Are there smart devices we can build for pet care, for plant care, for gardening? Uh, and you'll be surprised there aren't many devices out there for this. Uh, is there stuff that we can do for tackling laundry and dishes? And of course, the last was home lighting and air conditioning, which is, I think, which is already out there. I think there are some great devices like Nest, which work with HVAC units and which predicts user usage and then, you know, sets the temperature of the home accordingly. But unfortunately, you know, there are very few companies and there are very, I don't think there are, there's any mainstream company that's built a solution for India where we don't have HVAC in consumers, uh, you know, in the consumer space, but we have split air conditioners, right? Which are mainstream. Can we build something on top of that, which will help us monitor temperature and, you know, control temperature and humidity in a far better way, right? Uh, and of course, uh, coming to the third and the final leg of the presentation, uh, we need to go beyond smart home automation. I think uh, innovation lies uh, in, 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 uh, in thinking of it as a, as a larger thing. Uh, it's a missing link to smart cities. Uh, you know, this is uh, a quote that I took uh, from, from a report that was uh, conducted uh, by ABI Research. And, uh, you know, there are said to be almost 300 million smart homes uh, around the world by 2022. And, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see, see how they can play a role in, uh, you know, enabling and, and, and accelerating smart city initiatives, right? So, uh, think of you know, the rise of the resource sharing economy, what the smart grid could not do, smart home solutions could, right? Uh, you have data that you can actually share. You have, you have probably more units of electricity that you are using in, in, in greater Bombay area, which you can then pass on as credits to, uh, you know, to Navi Mumbai and the outskirts where there's a lot of load shedding happening, right? Uh, and that, that's actually optimizing the resources around you. Uh, and, you know, using data uh, and sharing that data to actually do predictive analytics, right? Imagine crime data from security devices in a specific neighborhood uh, that can help predict crime rates in the city or in that area and further even help the need uh, for more security at a local and a city level uh, based on the data that, that's available out there. So I think uh, the more we think about this as a platform that's not just you know, constraint to your home, but goes beyond it to, you know, municipalities and, you know, municipal corporations, cities, local governments, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, th th there is more, uh, there is more that you can get from the home and there's more contribution that you're doing to the larger uh, society rather than just your home, right? Uh, Another very important aspect, which I'm, I'm very passionate about, uh, which actually was a part of my TED talk, uh, was marrying smart with sustainability, right? Uh, why can't the future be smart plus sustainable, right? And here, what I mean is that you have IoT and connected devices, and you have sustainable best practices in green living, like solar, wind energy, uh, you know, water harvesting. What if we are able to marry that together and build solutions that actually are eco-friendly while at the same time convenient, right? And I have a video to show you for that. So I'm just going to jump to that and show you a very quick video. I'll not show you the, the full video. You know, I'll only show it to a certain extent, but this is very, very interesting. It's a four minute video. Hello, my name is Ludovic Debois. I'm CEO and founder of Sun Partner Technologies. We started the company by developing and manufacturing transparent and invisible photovoltaic cells. Wizip's crystal is a transparent photovoltaic cell that is integrated into a smart room. Imagine that you are outside and you don't have any more battery. You need access to energy and our technology can bring you enough power to give a call or to send messages. We are still developing the technology with Kyocera Mobile in order to bring it into their rugged form. We demonstrated for the first time in Mobile World Congress this year in Barcelona. After the smartphone, we decided to address also a new market, the connected watch. By integrating our technology with its reflex, which is also a transparent photovoltaic cell and our technology can bring up to 50% more autonomy to the connected watch. We are developing our technology into 
the Vector Watch, which is a connected watch manufacturer from UK. Recipes Reflect is under production now. We are manufacturing it here in France for the first volumes and we are preparing mass production. For the market of transport and buildings, we created a new technology which is called Wizips Glass. Wizips Glass is also a transparent photovoltaic cell, but like I said, for big surfaces. What for? Let me give some example. On the automotive industry, imagine that you are in LA, you just arrive at the airport, and it's about 46 degrees, so you know already how hot is it in your car. So you decide from your mobile phone to start the air conditioning, how technology can bring enough energy to start it without discharging the battery of your car. More and more, the companies of aircraft are integrating smart windows that integrate opacity film, but... The so this is just to give you a brief idea of what I mean by marrying you know, smart with sustainability, right? And I think, um, I think that's, I think that's, that's where the future is headed. Uh, and you know, I, 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 I strongly feel that this is the need of the hour, and this is again an opportunity in disguise, right? Your problems of powering IoT devices can actually be solved by such solutions, right? Uh, you're basically. Uh, opening up newer avenues and uh, newer opportunities to uh, to actually cater to different uh, industry verticals by building one such device, as you can see in this video, and uh, and 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 most of all, you are reducing your carbon footprint, right, and helping uh, build a better better planet. Um, you know, uh, the next thing is I think user centricity to be built into the ecosystem, and. So here I'm giving you a, giving you a glimpse of a, a product. Uh, now, can anyone guess this? I think, come on, like, I don't think this is going to be difficult. Um, can anyone guess what this is? Google Drive? Google? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what's interesting here is, uh, you know, just to uh, tell you and the reason I have put this out here is because this was the Google Wave that you, that I showed you earlier was actually a product which came up with features like collaborative uh, document creation and collaborative chat. So you could actually see people take a note together on that, on that uh, product. And it actually evolved into something more meaningful which was a competitor to a rival that is Microsoft Office, right? So people understood word processing. People did not understand Google Wave, right? People understood chat and IM. People did not understand Google Wave. And people understand Facebook, but people don't understand Google Wave. Whereas Google Wave has all those features, the positioning is out of whack because it's not focused on a particular niche or a particular application or usage. And to me, I think that's the biggest mistake that a lot of us are making when we are building products. Uh, we are building products with great features, but we are not going in depth when it comes to looking at user behavior and positioning our product to solve a particular problem. The moment we solve that deep problem, I think we have killed it and we are going to make that technology mainstream. So here's an example of that same wine glass that you saw last time. Uh, the first slide that was one of the initial slides that I showed you, the wine glass where you couldn't actually drink out of it. Here's a different and a more uh, interesting use case of a wine glass where it actually doesn't spill wine and you can drink out of this, right? So with that, I would like to end this presentation uh, with one more example, actually. <laughs> Sorry. This is a made for India lock. If you have seen this, this is a lock by a company called Igloo. And uh, it's actually a padlock which, in which you can put your keys. It has a SIM card on it, so it's completely offline. It doesn't need smart connectivity. And you can actually, you know, uh, put an OTP to open that padlock and uh, you can uh, put the keys in it. It's very, very popular with Airbnb and uh, now they are coming to India as well. So this is one such solution. And that's it about me. Uh, let's reinvent homes and uh, let's think about living, you know, in a new age with uh, deeper and better user experience. Hey, uh, 
Thanks so much, Dhawal. This was like an amazing session. Uh, and we have a lot of questions on the window, so I'm going to start asking them one by one sure. uh, to you. Uh, in fact, the first question comes from me. Uh, what is one of the killer use case for smart home that you think as per your um, research or understanding of the market? Is there anything specific, like something that people will definitely spend money for in smart home? Uh, so not as a home. Uh, okay. But I would say specific use cases. So, for example, uh, one big challenge, very, very interesting. Uh, let me tell you, uh, there is a very interesting trend right now. Two trends that I would like to talk about. People moving in from uh, home towns like Indore or wherever else to larger cities like Bombay with their parents still being there in the hometown. So, we get inquiries from people who actually say, do you have solutions that will help me monitor my elderly parents there? Let me tell you that there is no one solution for it. It's not like you can put a security cam and the solution is over. So what we built is we built a entire bundle of products, which includes like a smart watch, which has a panic button, which also, uh, you know, gives data of your health uh, to your kids who are living in the city and you are in your hometown. Plus there is a security camera. Plus, there is a panic button, a remote doorbell. So we basically built a solution around it. And I think if there was one solution which solves this problem of taking care of my parents while I'm in the city doing my 9 to 5 job, I think that would be killer and people would pay for that. Now, another interesting thing which I got off uh, on a conversation with a builder last week was building a solution for elderly and senior citizens in cities like Bombay where their kids have actually gone abroad and they are just living here by themselves and they have crores and crores of rupees to spend and they are buying a 20 crore property in Prabhadevi and they are having four rooms and every room they want to do something of their own you know they basically have money they have money to spend but they don't find good solutions where they can actually you know entertain themselves so it's very interesting that both of these are you know catering to the same audience but they're all from different, uh, you know, different geographies and different demographic and socioeconomic backgrounds. Uh, but if there is something that we can build for the elderly people, I think that that will be fantastic. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, so we have a question from Shitij. Uh, wouldn't you think that IF T support would help in the Indian smart home, smart hub and switch space? Uh, okay. Yes, so uh, IF Triple T is something that one manufacturer that I know is actually building and one of the first companies apparently to integrate with IF Triple T. It does help. Uh, but my problem is this that unless there are enough and more people on IF Triple T, Indian manufacturers and Indian device providers, uh, you will never be able to actually do anything about it. You are only going to integrate to services and products outside of it. Uh, but to me, it's an opportunity where let's say you're building a product or a service. Or let's say you're building a small app, right? And that app is going to give notifications for all your devices, no matter which device you bought from which manufacturer. And if you get that app on IF Triple T and sell it as something where, you know, for every Indian product you that's out there, I can send notifications to you or I can do something for you. And that app works with every device, then that's fantastic. So you could you could build something like that. Why not? But one problem with IF Triple T for me is that it's again not easy to use it's meant for the techies it's not easy for a layman to use those things so at the end of it the onus of the service of the solution providing and the support that you need when you have a smart home uh, still lies with uh, with an individual or with a i would say an entity that specializes in that right so imagine the maintenance fee that you're paying right now for your electricity, for your water and all those things. Imagine you paying an additional fee for that in order to manage your smart home and there is a facility management uh, person who or a, or a company that's been you know allocated that and they manage everything. And to me, that when that happens, it's not going to be about saying, hey, boss, you're managing my smart home. It's going to be about saying that you're managing my security, you're managing my fire, you're managing my you know automation, you're managing my uh, you know everything, all my services, so to speak. Great. Um, by the way, you answered this next question by Ashish in some way in your survey report. His question is, do you have estimates on how many homes or offices are in India already smart, number one? And second, at what rate the market is growing? Um, 
of course yeah. um, so yeah. these, these are very tough questions to answer i have to be honest about this right uh, mm-hmm. i think i have been struggling and uh, you know sort of like uh, trying to figure out the answer to this uh, but it's very hard uh, the reality is that you know it, it's it's uh, the growth is uh, growth is there it's increasing but it's not a double digit growth for sure uh, second is that the number of homes which are offices which are smart i don't have data of that and i don't rely on data by other reports because uh, they are either biased or they are by companies who are manufacturing those products and they are sort of just trying to sell those sell those solutions so very hard to say but i do know that there are uh, there are a good i think 8 lakh smart speakers sold by amazon uh, and i i rely on that data because it's 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 definable it's it's possible to actually track that uh, and uh, it's come out in the in the newspapers i'm not sure about that number though i will try to come back to you with that but if you do a quick google search you will get actual data of how many smart speakers have been sold in india okay uh, so one question from mayur a very interesting one uh, one challenge is to add value in every step of the value chain and another is that not everyone is aware about where we buy smart stuff from so do you think if i am a startup in smart home i should uh, not use the existing dealers of electronics in the, in i the, highly uh, encourage you to not do that now here's the thing i'm tell, i'm going to tell you something uh, i'm sorry who is that shitej you said no mayur mayur oh, mayur advani yeah. so mayur uh, here's the thing right uh, we are right now having a e-commerce store where we sell you know robotic vacuum cleaners which is also sold on you know amazon and all of that the problem is that uh, so here's the thing a uh if you are going to rely on the old school value chain you are going to be struggling with distribution and i'll tell you why uh because you're going to be dealing with people who are not enabled who are not equipped to sell your devices a b you're going to have to do deals and you're going to have to shove uh, a lot of marketing dollars behind actually creating a brand for your product so that there is a pull for the product by these retailers distributors slash system integrators and this is something that i have seen time and again now as smart home nx we actually did this we actually did did lead generation for smart home manufacturers and system integrators for a long time and we realized that there was a need for that because all these guys who manufactured and innovated and bought a good product into the market they were spending a lot of money in r&d then they realized that that my product is good my distribution is great so i'll sell but unfortunately they were not able to sell because there was no one who was asking for it this is not a product like an led that people are going to come to your distributor and say are mujhe ye chahiye no one says that you need to shove it to them you need to teach them you need to educate them you need to inspire them to say that okay you know what this makes sense for you this is going to improve your standard of living and that's how it's going to get sold so if you are going to be deliberating about going through the old value chain let me caution you and say don't we are in fact looking for people who have such products and trying to sell it online and what we have done is we have tied up with system integrators across india so we are right now working on an entire model which we are piloting in mumbai where we do tie ups with system integrators the system integrators actually sell those devices for you but the entire delivery happens online the entire pricing is transparent online so there is no ambiguity in pricing otherwise the moment you get into the old distribution model there is going to be a pricing war no customer is going to know what is the right price for the product because one guy will charge 25% margin the other guy will charge 5% some guys will do it at cost because they want to grow their business and the customer is going to be like i have no clue what this brand is all about right so i highly encourage you to think about that and build something organically either on your own platform or tie up with someone like us where we can actually manage the entire distribution online as well as the solutioning offline because we have all the tie ups in place for it great uh, so uh, in the interest of time uh, there are a lot more questions but i'm going to take two more um, uh, for you uh, dhawal and uh, then i can share the late, uh, the later questions with you over the email uh, yeah. so one is from rishi which is what is the proportion of out of the box open api solutions in smart home space versus closed api and how will it change in the future according to you i am i'm not a technical guy so i don't really know uh, in okay. detail about this but i can surely say that uh, uh, i mean obviously i understand open api and closed api i i can just say one thing that a uh, lot of people are building proprietary shit and unfortunately a lot of people who are building these proprietary systems are people from the likes of 
uh, you know, Apple, Google, Amazon, and all those. Uh, and the reason they are building that is because they want to own that entire ecosystem, which is fine if the interface makes sense. And I think it's a great interface. But the unfortunate thing is a lot of smaller players think that by building a closed API system, they can actually grow, which is, doesn't make any sense to me. So I would say the trend right now is more towards open. They have realized that interoperability is a problem and they can't do everything. Samsung is losing out because Bixby really sucks. Uh, Google is losing out because they don't have hardware out there. Alexa is losing out because they don't have great software and as great AI as Google. So the reality is that everyone's sort of, you know, trying to play this game. This is me talking as an entrepreneur, not as someone from the IoT space. And I think all these guys as entrepreneurs and as business owners are trying to play this game where they'll say they'll own it. But sooner or later, they know that there's something that they will never be able to do. Right. And Amazon is sort of trying to do that by acquiring everyone. They bought a security uh, alarm company. They bought a security door lock company. They bought a security uh, ring, ring uh, doorbell company. They're doing all that. But the truth is they'll never be able to compete because there are going to be always someone else who's going to be two steps ahead of them in that product. And you can't just compete like that. So uh, eventually open API is something that that's where the trend is heading. Uh, and, and I think that's where we should head as well. Excellent. So last question and something more for you, actually for your startup. And this is from SRG. Uh, is Smart Home NX setting up operations in Delhi NCR, number one? And moreover, do you guys make your hardware in-house? We don't make our hardware in-house. We are, uh, you can call us as an online system integrator. So we have an e-commerce store and we take orders online for products. And uh, the solutioning happens offline through our system integrator tie-ups across India. And yes, we do have tie-ups with system integrators in Delhi. However, we have not really focused on that market a lot. We are doing a lot more in Mumbai, Pune, Bangalore and Hyderabad. Excellent. Uh, last one from Deepak is how to connect to telcos, distributors, dealers to create an ecosystem. Why will people believe a startup to build an ecosystem? Interesting one to me, actually. Um, I, yeah. Okay. Um, like I, I think the question is more about like you touched upon this earlier that uh, yeah. how do you really reach out to the customer? How do they know? No, that? here's the thing. Here's yeah. the thing, right? Yeah. I think, I think that. Building an ecosystem does not require you to go to telcos or distributors or dealers. You need to get your product right and reach out to the customers. And then distributors, dealers and telcos will automatically come to you. To give you a simple example, if you're going to build something, let's say for, uh, you know, uh, security in remote areas, right? Maybe a smart door lock for remote areas where there's zero connectivity or something. You don't rely on telco infrastructure. You don't rely on distributors. You rely on basically online sales you rely on you know reaching out to that market in your own way as a startup and as far as relying or you know believing the startup and building an ecosystem is concerned there are two parts to it if you're talking about an ecosystem where you are saying that oh you're going to build your own proprietary protocol then yes you're going to fail but if you're going to build an ecosystem which is going to provide a value as a part of the service where let me give you one more example uh, if you guys have heard of mygate right mygate is a uh, is a company that provides apartment security, right? So you have a tablet that's given to every, you know, uh, security cabin in your apartment or in your society. And then every person or, or who has a smartphone has, a, has an app as well. Now what they're doing is they're providing a great service by actually enabling security at the gate level so that the entry and exit of maids or uh, entry and exit of delivery boys, all of that is taken care of by them and you know there is an entire service behind it right so it's not just the app you can you know they have an opportunity to build value added service around it they can probably tie up with big basket or they can do a lot of things around that so that's what we are talking about we're talking about building an ecosystem which is consumer focused ecosystem of a particular problem you're solving i'm not talking about building an iot ecosystem i think that is something completely different so i think startups should be focused more on that there are enough and more players trying to fix and figure out which is the right protocol, which is the right, you know, uh, low bandwidth, this thing, looking at data analytics and all of those things. I'm talking about building use cases for smart living for an end consumer. And to build that ecosystem, you need the right hardware and you need services around it. And everything else can be based on what's already available in the market in terms of infra, in terms of, you know, uh, everything else. Like distribution ship also can be leveraged. Okay. 
So uh, thank you so much, Dhawal. I, I see your computer battery is also running low. <laughs> but this was an amazing session. Like uh, personally, like I think I learned a lot. Um, there are a couple of more questions I share. I will share with them later with you. Sure. And uh, guys, like I'll be sharing the presentation, the one that Dhawal went through today uh, well, with all of you. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Geo is not going to dominate this. I read that. And Gio yeah, is yeah, not yeah. Going to this. It's a very yeah. short answer, but I can give you a long answer later. So, um, yeah, I agree. Uh, I, actually, I purposely didn't ca capture that because I, <laughs> I thought uh, Geo. Uh, um, uh, anyway, uh, so uh, coming to to the uh, the session, what I will do is I will share this presentation. We also have recorded the full session, so uh, we will share the video, uh, the audio recording of the session as well with all of you. But I think there were some great questions from the audience, and uh, the whole like uh, this this session has opened a. Uh, I, uh, for, for me, for some of the aspects of smart home as a business, because I uh, typically deal with B2B myself, but this is really amazing. Uh, Dhawal, would you be sharing the survey report also with us? Like, is that something yeah, possible? It's, it's uh -huh. published. Uh, the okay. entire, uh, infographic is published on uh, uh -huh. Realty Plus magazine. Okay. The link with everyone, surely. Okay, great, man. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, uh, for your time today. Uh, hope to connect with you once again on March 16th in our Lura workshop. If you have guys have any further question, keep posting in the chat window. It will be open for some time, but we'll end the session now. Yeah. Thank you, Dhawal. Thanks, Thanks so much. Bye. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye bye.